There are about 20 million people around the world who are currently diagnosed with some form of cancer. Of that number, around half succumb to this dangerous disease every year. But the good news is that there's a lot being done in studies, labs, and treatment clinics to not only save patients, but also to prevent this sickness from happening in the first place. From testing out the world's first lung cancer vaccine, to better screening methods for different types, to experimenting with new medicines, there's truly a lot to be excited about in our quest to ultimately eradicate cancer. Hey, I'm your host Regis, and today we're looking at humanity's race to finally cure cancer. There have been many improvements made to optimize the detection and treatment of different cancers during these last couple of years. Before we look at what's being done with some of the major types, here are some general updates about what's happening all around the world. Over in Mongolia, for instance, a new project to curb this disease's mortality rate has reached an amazing 40% of the country's population. The country has the highest cancer mortality rate in the world, and Mongolian men are twice as likely to die from it than the global average. All because of late detection and diagnosis, poor public health care awareness, and a lack of treatment centers. Now, Mongolia has rolled out an early screening program that has seen an immediate increase in the number of diagnoses. While those numbers haven't yet been made public, and the program is still in its infancy, it's a positive step towards getting patients the proper treatment as soon as possible. Over in Sweden, fewer Swedes between the ages of 20 and 50 are developing skin cancer. According to a new study, the number of these diagnoses has been dropping steadily since 2015, and so has the mortality rate for those under the age of 59. The authors of the study believe that better medicines have greatly contributed to the decline in mortality rate. As for the reduction in cases, the theory is that better awareness of sun protection, a lack of access to sunbeds, and people spending more time indoors are all responsible. Artificial intelligence is also playing a huge role in better detection. General practitioners in England who use AI to help identify possible cases have increased the country's detection rate by around 8%. This AI program is called See the Signs, and it uses patients' medical records, test results, family histories, and even post postal codes to determine whether they're at risk of developing some form of disease. The country's National Health Service hopes to be able to diagnose 75% of all cancer types either during the first or second stage by the year 2028 using this groundbreaking technology. In the United States, scientists at Harvard have developed a chat GPT style AI model that can do all sorts of diagnostic tasks while covering 19 different cancers. What's more is that this model, when tested, scored a 94% detection accuracy. But one of the most positive and exciting stories right now is the discovery that blood proteins could help to predict a person's risk up to seven years before being diagnosed with cancer. This discovery was made by comparing the proteins in the blood of people who've had the illness at some point in their lives with those who haven't. Scientists concluded that there were 40 proteins indicating someone's risk of developing one of nine different types of cancer. The hope is that this newfound knowledge could help with early detection and even better medicines to target growing tumors. Okay, those are the good news broad strokes in the world of diagnosis and treatment developments, but we want to know what's being done within the many different fields. So let's start off first by looking at humanity's fight against lung cancer. It's the number one cause of cancer deaths worldwide, and the vast majority of these cases are the result of smoking. The most recent data from 2022 shows that this disease contributes to one in every eight new cancer diagnoses worldwide, which amounts to about two and a half million cases per year. On top of that, this aggressive condition is responsible for about one in five deaths from cancer, about 1.8 million deaths per year. Lung cancer develops when cells in the lungs start changing their DNA to create more and more cancerous cells. This accumulation can create a tumor, and these cells will eventually break away from the lungs and infect other parts of the body. But why is that so deadly? Well, it turns out that it's pretty difficult to diagnose, since symptoms only show up in the later stages of its development. On top of that, it usually affects older people, who usually have other coexisting conditions that can complicate treatment. With that in mind, let's find out what's being done to curb cases and lower the mortality rate, starting with the invention of the world's first lung cancer vaccine. In 2024, these groundbreaking vaccine trials were launched across seven countries all around the world, including the UK, the US, Germany, Hungary, Poland, Spain, and Turkey. 
this new mRNA vaccine has the ability to tell the human body to hunt down these destructive cells, destroy them, and keep them from growing back. Best of all is that it doesn't destroy any healthy cells in the body, unlike chemotherapy for example. The vaccine is being tested on around 130 patients with either early stage, late stage, or a recurring cancer profile. If all goes well during the trials, this amazing medical technology could have the potential to save millions of lives. In more good news, a new medical trial has proven to stop these tumor cells from growing 40% longer than with standard treatment, using a brand new drug combination. The trial study has shown that people who took a combination of two drugs called imivantamab and lazertinib were still alive after an average of 23 months without any additional tumor growth. For those using the standard medicine called osimertinib, that time was reduced to just over 16 months. This new drug therapy has already been approved by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States, and hopefully more people around the world will soon have access to this longer living treatment. These really are exciting times. Now, let's move on to what's happening in the world of prostate cancer. This type is second only to lung cancer as the most diagnosed cancer in men worldwide. There are an estimated 1.5 million new cases every year and just under 400,000 deaths annually. Risk factors include old age, family history and genetics, as well as health factors like smoking and poor nutrition. Prostate cancer develops in the prostate gland, and it grows slower compared to most other forms. Most of the time, tumors are diagnosed long before the disease has had time to spread to other parts of the body. This increases the survival rate significantly, as a whopping 99% of patients diagnosed and treated before it spreads out side of the prostate are still alive at least five years later. Now, while it is easier to detect, there are still way too many people dying from it every year, mainly because it affects older men and not everyone goes for early testing. Early detection remains vital, and scientists have now come up with a way to improve early diagnoses in the form of a quick and cheap DNA test. This exciting new test literally takes seconds and involves collecting a person's spit to be analyzed for genetic markers. These markers can indicate the presence of the disease in someone's DNA. The test is not only more accurate than your standard blood test and even MRI scans, but it can also determine who's prone to a more aggressive form of this illness. Now, so far, these tests have been able to pick up both risks and tumors in people who had no idea that they even had either. This is excellent, because the sooner the diagnosis, the better the chance of successful treatment. It's hoped that this quick and easy test, requiring nothing more than a mouth swab, will be made widely available in the not-so-distant future. From one of the most common cancers in men to the most common diagnosed among women. Let's take a look at what's being done to control breast cancer. This one is prevalent among women all over the world, and yes, around 1% of men can develop it too. In 2022, there were 2.3 million newly diagnosed cases worldwide, with a mortality number of 670,000. It occurs in every single country in the world and can affect any woman past the age of puberty. Breast cancer develops when abnormal breast cells inside the milk ducts start growing out of control. They eventually form tumors, and when these tumors start spreading to the lymph nodes and other part of the body, they can become fatal. There are a couple of risk factors that contribute to the development of these tumors, including things like family history, alcohol abuse and tobacco use, and a woman's general reproductive history. Historically, a screening involves going for a mammogram, which is an x-ray examination of the inside of the breast that's notoriously uncomfortable. Now, a new technology looks to change all of that, and it's called the Koning Vera Breast CT. This new image device produces high-resolution 3D images in just 7 seconds without compressing the breast like a mammogram does. Not only that, but it can detect the presence of cancerous cells with even more accuracy than the standard procedure. You see, some women have more dense breast tissue than others making it difficult to spot these dangerous cells when using a mammogram. With this newly inventive technology, dense tissue isn't really a problem anymore, and the presence of bad cells and tumors can be detected both better and earlier. So far, this groundbreaking piece of tech has been put to use in clinics across the United States, as well as some places in Europe and Asia. Of course, there's another major cancer that affects many women all over the world, so let's find out what's being done to stave off cervical cancer. It's the fourth most common cancer among women on a global scale. With around 660,000 new cases yearly and 350,000 deaths. 
It's caused by cancerous cells growing in the cervix. The human papillomavirus, also known as HPV, is responsible for almost all known cases around the world. This virus spreads through sexual contact, but today there are vaccines that can prevent this infection from turning deadly. Risk factors include HIV prevalence, poor access to screenings and vaccinations, smoking, and family history. The good news is that the risk of dying from it can now be cut by as much as 40%, all thanks to a treatment regime. It involves a short course of chemotherapy, followed by traditional chemoradiation treatment. Chemoradiation is a combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which is normally used to treat this disease. By adding the initial short course chemotherapy, the mortality rate of patients not only dropped by 40%, but the risk of it returning within five years was also reduced by an amazing 35%. This new treatment has the potential to save many, many lives, and it's already being implemented across the United Kingdom. Let's hope to see this life-saving treatment being used all over the world in the near future. For now, on we move to learn about the progress being made in our fight against one of the most difficult types of cancer out there, pancreatic cancer. With more than 500,000 cases every year and around 460,000 deaths annually worldwide, this condition has a low survival rate because it's especially difficult to detect in its early stages. It occurs in the pancreas, a gland in the abdomen that helps with digestion. Risk factors include diabetes, smoking, excess weight, and hereditary factors. Early stage pancreatic cancer doesn't show up on imaging tests, which means that most people only learn about the ailment once the tumors have spread. On top of that, it's resistant to many common drugs used to combat cancer, making treatment extremely difficult. But with this in mind, there are some positive developments when it comes to finding the best medicines to treat this notoriously difficult illness. The FDA has recently granted the accelerated approval of a new drug called Bizangri. This new medicine is known as a form of targeted therapy, meaning that it's created to zone in on a specific type of tumor. In this case, the drug targets tumors with a unique genetic alteration to prevent those tumors from growing. So far, up to 40% of 30 patients have seen their tumors shrink thanks to Bizangri, and two-thirds of the 40% experienced shrinking tumors for up to six months. Another therapy that's already being used to treat other forms of cancer is now showing promise among patients with a certain type of pancreatic cancer too. This therapy is called tumor treating fields. This treatment, when used in combination with chemotherapy on patients whose tumors haven't yet spread to other organs, has seen survival rates increase during its trial studies. Tumor treating fields use a portable, battery-operated device that creates electric fields. These fields then slow and reverse the division and replication of cancerous cells. While more studies and trials are needed to determine the best and most efficient way to treat patients with this challenging sickness, these developments are inspiring and will hopefully only increase positive results. Let's now find out what's being done to tackle bone cancer. This can include many different types of cancers that spread and develop in the human bones, but primary bone cancer is the one that originates in the bone itself. It accounts for only 0.2% of all human tumors and has a five-year survival rate of 68%. It usually affects children and young adults, and the risk factors include previous cancer treatments or certain inherited genetic disorders. Treatments can include radiation, chemotherapy, and surgery. However, a new treatment recently devised was able to kill an incredible 99% of these deadly cells, and it involves bioactive toxic glass. Yep. You heard that right. Scientists were able to use bioactive glass and lace it with a toxic metal called gallium to kill bone cancer cells in just 10 days without harming any healthy cells. What's more is that this new treatment is also showing promise in the regeneration of healthy bones. This fantastic new discovery is still in its infancy, but more studies might soon be leading to better ways to eliminate this condition. Before we discuss the final cancer in our video today, we'd really appreciate your support and thoughts about our channel in the comments below. And if you want to see more good news, make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on your weekly dose of positive stories. Oh, and you can also become a Good News member to help us create more of these videos. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at the progress being made when it comes to rectal cancer. With just under 2 million new cases worldwide each year and a mortality rate of 900,000 annually, this disease occurs when cancerous cells develop in the rectum. Treatments can include surgery to remove the tumors, chemotherapy, radiation, and targeted therapy. The average age of diagnosis is 63, 
and other risk factors can include digestive diseases, biological history, smoking, and an unhealthy diet. In December of 2024, the FDA approved a new drug to treat these tumors, and it's called Dostarlamab. The drug can fully eradicate tumors without any other treatment needed. That's right, during the trials that involved 42 separate patients, this medicine was able to eliminate tumors with a 100% success rate. Even better, most of these patients have stayed cancer-free for at least a year, with some currently approaching their fifth year. Another promising discovery recently made has seen a longer radiation treatment reduce the potential of having to undergo surgery. The treatment is referred to as long-course radiotherapy. This type of treatment reduces damage to organs, often seen in short-course treatments. By preserving the rectum and anus, doctors can ensure better quality of life for these patients. The study was inspired by the COVID-19 pandemic and included 323 patients with tumors that had grown outside the rectum but had not yet spread to other parts of the body. Of those patients, around 247 received the long-course treatment, and after two years, 40% of the patients who didn't undergo surgery showed optimal organ preservation. Those who received the short-course treatment had 31% successful organ preservation. All of these developments and success stories just show that we're edging closer and closer to better treatments and ways to prevent cancer altogether. And it sure is enough to be positive about. But what do you think? Will we be able to find more cures for the Big C? Drop us your comments below, and for more good news, click here. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.